Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friends. So glad to be with you today. Hope you're having a really good day. And it's always, I mean, it's a pleasure and an honor to meet with you like this. And um, we don't know a whole lot of you folks, but those that we do know, we really cherish. And we thank you for tuning in and just so thankful that we can have this connection. Uh, you'll be glad you tuned in today. I have a wonderful guest. His name is Rick Unruh. And he wrote a book, Self Surrender, The Key to Dreaming Again. And let me tell you, he knows what he's talking about. If you could read his book, you would understand uh, some really hard places in life. But if you meet him, he's full of joy and enthusiasm and all. And if you meet someone like this, you know it pays to serve the Lord, that he'll carry you through anything. I want you to hear his story. And I'm going to join Stephanie for Lemon Chicken Primavera. And it's got all kinds of things in it. Um, I've thought so many times how wonderful someone invented pasta because it just stretches a meal and it can really give you that sense of filling up. You add just a little bit of meat to it, a little vegetables and all, and you've got your entree. And that's the kind of recipe we have today. But before I join her, I want to again offer you Bible Basics. Now, this is a small book with all kinds of information on to how to study the Bible and how to get more out of it. And as I was thinking about this, I thought there's really no, no excuse today to be ignorant about the Word of God. There's so many things, so many things that can help you and, you know, give you a shortcut in some ways. So uh, this is a small book, gives you a lot of information if you want to know more about the Word of God, and I hope you do. Uh, for any gift to this ministry, any gift at all, uh, we'll send it to you. If you use your credit cards, 1-800-229-0059 or the address, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, and we'll get it right out to you. And I've joined Sister Stephanie. How are yes. you today? Good. Looking lovely, by the oh, way. Oh, well, thank like you. My necklace. CVS $10 dress. CVS? CVS. I hate clothes shopping. More do they than have clothes? They do. That's a drugstore. So, yeah, it was eleven ninety nine. I had a 30% off coupon. <laughs> <laughs> I hate clothes shopping. I, I mean, with a passion. I don't want to yeah, do I don't it. Care to if do I it. can go into CVS while I'm picking up some other stuff and pick up a dress, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and you look gorgeous. Well, thanks. Gorgeous. Okay, you cooked up a little chicken so there. So I have chicken. So I'm going to put in some red pepper and some garlic, and I'm going to start sauteing. You're cutting up some parsley a little parsley, for me. Yeah. Yep. And then I also have some milk and some flour here. All of the ingredients will come up on the end. At the end, I have too many ingredients to. And this uh, has a lot of color, but you were saying that primavera means it's like fresh vegetable, vegetables, fresh vegetables and, and yeah. So, so you could put this more has in it. yeah, this has peppers. This has peas. Peas, but you and, could. There's mm -hmm. a lot. You could put carrots, asparagus, anything. Oh you yeah, want. you could put all kinds of yummy stuff. It's, uh, Am I supposed to mix this together? Yes, please. So we're gonna be. You and have this, milk and flour you're mixing mm -hmm. together, and I'm just get, I'm cranking up Give the heat here. Give it a little thickness. We also have dill weed, salt, Ooh. pepper, lemon zest, and peas that we're going to put in. I put a lot of dill in my chicken salad. Mm. Mm -hmm. So good. That's good in potato salad. So good. Do you know, nice th this is July as we're speaking to you, and outside of her door she has one, 146 days? 148 days till Christmas. Till Christmas. <laughs> It's so funny to hear the people walk by, and some people are like, oh, yay, and some people are like, are you serious? <laughs> so I I bet, I'll bet you I could give a list of who said yay and who said are you listen, serious. Listen, it's we work coming, together. so I'm just trying to help prepare people. That's yeah. all. Yes. Everyone doesn't have to jump on the Christmas bandwagon with me, but those that do, they should appreciate join, it. Join in. Okay, so I'm going to put in the milk and the flour. We're gonna, so I got this cranked up. This is going to be deliciousness. This is also going to be my boss's lunch today. So mm -hmm. I've got to take him some up. So I'm going to get that cranked up. Got I've got it on high. I got dill weed, yummy, yep. yummy flavor, salt, which it's been sitting here for a while. Do you ever sit and wonder sometimes? A lot of things, but what are about you? About the Garden of Eden. Wonder what it smelled like. It oh, had all these can herbs. Can you imagine? And, yes. Such freshness and and nothing yeah. negative. It was all just beautiful fresh air. Yes. 
Kind of like my office, if you want to know. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> okay, so I got the heat cranked up. I'm going to put some peas in here. Cook this a lot longer. I am speed cooking. But I as am we all loving know. the way it's looking. Yes, it's gorgeous, right? Mm -hmm. Just I just need another minute. You, you yeah. if you want to get rid of that, you can. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Well, usually we have to shortcut a little bit. Yeah. But so cook it I a lot longer. Our, let I think our viewers are used to it. Let all the flavors marry. They need to get married and form a relationship. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to put a go. little bit of the pasta in here. The rest will go in later. I'm going to taste yes, this. Yes, sometimes it's too much. Yeah. Because you want you want to get all a good oh, yeah. flavor. Okay, so. Wonderful thing about pasta, it doesn't have a flavor. So anything you add to it right. becomes. Okay, I'm just putting You're going to just take a little bite. Yes, I'm okay. going to put a little cheese on here. Because mm -hmm. I want it to be pretty. Because you know what you eat with your eyes before you, sure, you eat with your mouth. You surely do. Parsley. Okay. And you cannot eat with your eyes. You can look at something and say, no way. How is it? That lemon. Uh-huh. Mmm. It's very good. Uh-huh. It's delicious. You want this one. Yes. Lemon chicken primavera. Let me tell you, if it were not good, this you would know it. This face holds no secret. I know I it. I promise you yeah. that. She, it's kind of impossible for her to lie because... Her this, face tells, right her tells tell, it all. And the, the viewers know that if they've tuned in. Mm -hmm. All right, if you want this recipe, it's absolutely free. Information's coming up on your screen. There are several ways to get it. We'll be glad to get it to you. And so I'm going to join Rick Unruh, and we're going to talk about a very, very, very interesting book. So stay with me. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. It is my privilege to welcome a minister who's been an evangelist, a pastor. Um, he's actually in missionary work right now. Mr. Rick Unruh, welcome to Homekeepers. Well, thank you for allowing me to join you today. Yes, and you uh, are with MAPS organization, and that's short-term missions, right? Mission America Placement Service, we have short-term missions. We also have the RVers that will, uh, churches provide the materials. RVers come in for bride labor for free, so doing amazing work. A lot work. of seniors, right? Yeah, so hey, still be active for the kingdom. Still dream big dreams. Yeah, so uh, when the website comes up, uh, that might be something you want to do. <clears throat> I think in my lifetime, uh, short-term missions has come about, and it's one of the greatest things ever Absolutely. for the kingdom of God. Yes. Puts everything back in perspective. We get comfortable in our own little zone and you go and, yeah. and you see different areas and different places and it really can move you. Yeah, my daughter and her family, she has two six foot sons and, and her husband, the last two years have gone to Guatemala for a week, the four of them, built three houses uh, for the poorest of the poor. Yeah. It's so good for young people. Yes, it is. So God bless you. It's great, great work you're in. Thank you. But let's go back to the beginning. In fact, you and I attended the same college, not yeah, at the same time. But exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was great so, memories there. Uh, <laughs> but you grew up in a Christian home, right? Yep. Expected to go in the ministry? Christian home, knew I was called in the ministry early on, never really doubted, struggled that with that, right on to Bible college, and, you know, you think you're just going to conquer the world, and... <laughs> And, uh, you know, the enemy attacks and life happens and, mm -hmm. and you know, it can definitely bring a shift. Yes, and um, the, the whole story is in here. And when we get to the part of the story, self-surrender, when I, when I saw that, I thought, <coughs> what's that mean, self-surrender? Well, we're, we're going to um, tell you about it. Did you uh, meet your wife in Bible college? Actually, I met her at church camp. We of were, course. Yep, yeah, so close enough at a church camp, and I attended my freshman year by myself, and she joined me uh, my sophomore year. And, you know, I was thinking uh, some of the things you've been through, and she's hung right there. Yeah, she's amazing. That um, till death do us part is pretty powerful. You better mean it. I wrote that in there that when we say those words in our vows, for better or for worse, mm. you really have no idea what that means. Those are words, they're powerful words, 
but you have no idea what that means. There, there was a local pastor here, and this young couple wanted to get married, and the groom said, I want to write the vows. The pastor said, no. Nope. He said, you, you can do anything you want in your wedding, but you can't improve those vows. And we've heard some of the stupid vows that people yeah. write. Yep. I saw one on TV where it said, I'll be your poo bear, and <laughs> the whole audience laughed, yeah. but that's not much of a commitment. Um, you traveled as an evangelist, which is tough. I've done it. Yeah, you, you know, we traveled five years uh, out of school, and God was doing great things. Um, two children on the way, third one coming, wife, uh, horrible, tough pregnancies, talk about that in the book. Uh, so really decided, well, we'll step out, take a secular job for, really thought it'd be a season, six mm -hmm. months, a year or two, you know. Um, ten years later, we're, we're still there, a million miles away from where, you know, God wanted me to be, but, mm -hmm. but that's where we were. Now, uh, you had three sons, mm -hmm. and you lost one of them, uh, was it age of 12? Yeah. yeah, October 19, 2001. Uh, and what happened? He was uh, out at his uh, grandpa's house riding four-wheelers, and uh, he uh, come off of a dike and ran through a barbed wire fence. It was right at dusk. They were coming back home from a friend's house, and so, uh, I mean, yeah, you're, you know, your world's rocked upside down every which way. Um, you know, you're trying to figure out how to even survive. You, you know, you can't imagine. That's, our, that's a parent's worst nightmare. Right. And then it happens, and you just you can't grasp it. There's really no way to describe it, too, no, right? No, there's really not. Um, probably we have viewers that are facing this. Do you have any word for them? How how do you how do you work through the pain? How do you go on? And that is a great and that that kind of that dream again message really was birthed out of the loss of our son. Because when you lose a child, you'll never think you'll understand passion again. Because in the scope of life, from being a very competitive person, what does winning or losing mean? I, I tell people I'd lose every game I played for the rest of my life if it meant I could have my son back. So you never think you'll understand passion. You just think you're walking through life numb now. Uh, but as you walk that journey and begin to surrender it that you know god reversed those dreams he does allow us to feel passion again and to dream again and that's a long process and a little bit what i even talked about it uh, in the book god's just opened up this new door we're starting in the fall we're actually uh going to different churches and and almost doing a workshop understanding the grieving heart and then how do you minister to them and really trying to help the church and a lot of churches do a great job at it. Others, you know, I don't want it. But how do we, because it's a lonely, lonely road. And yes, and uh, we're going to have that website up on the screen, and we'll leave it up there uh, because the name of the new ministry is Dream, Dream Again. Again. Yep. Um, and how long has it been? Was his name Landon? Landon, yeah. Yes. Oh. yeah. He died in 2001, so we just were coming up on 18 years here. Can you describe what it's like at this point? Uh, you know, it, it, it's still, you know, very emotional when I talk about them. Uh, writing the book and, you know, I, and I, so I share my testimony and I, every yeah. Sunday and I'm, I'm emotional about it. But writing the book, I had to go back and, you know, relive every detail of that mm -hmm. night, weeks to come. That was tough. So for my wife and I, learning how to help others walk this, that it is a long journey it's, you know, something that there's, there's no way to put words to it. Everybody grieves differently. Everybody grieves at a mm -hmm. different pace. Uh, husbands and wives, you know, men want to, you know, totally shut it in like we're tendency anyway. Women need to talk about it. Uh, even in our grieving workshop ministry, how do we minister to marriages? How do we keep people moving, you know, forward? So, uh, you know, it's just a continual learning process. So if we can walk with people and share our story of hope and encouragement, then, you know, it it's kind of goes back to that where Landon's life is still coming through us, you know, and blessing others. And it's uh, bringing fruit. Yes. Um, I think it's so uh, interesting that the Bible tells us that we receive his comfort in order that we can comfort others, and you've really got a good platform to do that. Yes. Yeah. 
If you just join me, I'm talking to uh, Rick Unruh. He's written this book of um, self-surrender. We'll get to that in a minute. And the key to dreaming again, he has served in many capacities in ministry. And the Lord does take our, I think, especially our adversities yes. uh, to use them. I, I don't know. Really, yeah, what, exactly. what benefit is a good a good time when you're in the pulpit, <laughs> yeah. and you got people out there with issues? All right, and so you you kind of had to make a, a living in the secular world, correct? And you got into the uh, savings and loan business, the mortgage mortgage business, business correct? Yeah, I, I used to work for a savings and loan, and so you have <laughs> a little bit of an understanding of that. And <laughs> there was a, a time when everything kind of crashed in that. Were, th were those the years when the senators were in it? And I know John McCain was in it, and I know that one of President Bush's sons. Yeah, was that was it. all that 2006, 2007, when the major, I know we've had yes. another kind of crash since then, but mm -hmm. that was the subprime and all that was coming to light uh, with that. So that had been, when we moved to Spring, we left Great Bend, moved to Springfield, trying to get a fresh start. Um, I tell people that, uh, you know, people often say money can't buy you happiness. Well, I disagree with that from this statement is that uh, it has happiness. You look back, the word has this idea of happen chance. Yeah. It's based upon events and things that we can do and Short create. Term. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what I say is that, that is, you know, it's Satan's counterfeit for what God wants you to experience with peace and joy because peace and joy. joy is sustainable. Happiness is always event driven and for me, it was money driven. Money could buy the events and things that temporarily ease the pain, never dealing with what was in here. And as I read the book, it was like the thing was getting shaky or something. You got out of it and thought everything was fine, moving on to the next uh, whatever yeah. in your life. and. You got a real wake-up call. Did, did they call you, or how, how did yeah. you find out well, that you know, the I'd federal heard, government was Yeah, I'd you? heard early on that the FBI was investigating, and we were done. We were no out. No problem. We moved back to Wichita. The, the industry was crashing. We were without a job anyway because all that was happening. So we wanted to get closer to family. Uh, spent 18 months. Really, I, that call of God was just going crazy in my heart again, but I couldn't define it or place it. And... Uh, so driving down the road, this is the one of the, the self. This is the defining self-surrender moment. The opening chapter is the self-surrender to Yankton prison yeah. camp, which comes. Yeah. But this is the defining self, and I'm I'm riding down the road, probably as close to an audible voice as I've ever heard. And God says, "You haven't given me everything." And I don't know if you've ever felt like are you paying attention, God, because <laughs> we pretty well lost everything. So hello, you know. <laughs> And I pull off alongside the road, sitting in my car, and all of a sudden I hear, you haven't given me everything, you haven't given me your son. And then the wall, go, oh no, we're not going there. I've locked that up in a closet, thrown away the key. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go there. And finally, after I don't know how long I was there, tears streaming down my face, I, I remember visually in my head, picking up my lifeless son, carrying him to the foot of the cross and saying, here he is, God. Here's my greatest hurt, my greatest pain, my greatest question about who you even are. But if you could take my son and use him for your glory, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. <laughs> and instantly, the dream again name, I'd never thought of that, never could see it. it right there alongside the road, these things, God just began. After 18 months, but sometimes you've got to get to that point. Are you willing to go to that closet that you've tucked something away, that you yeah. don't want to go back, that you don't want to forgive someone, that something happened in your childhood, and sometimes that's what's holding us back from our dreams is we don't, because that would have been a stumbling block on down the road if God hadn't have dealt it. And that should have been a great send off, oh. but then did you get a phone call from <laughs> yeah. the FBI? So we launch, I go back, we launch a Dream Again Counseling Center, uh, <laughs> May of 2009, it I'm says, flying high, <laughs> I got found my purpose, here's my calling, we're going to help the grieving, we're going to, all these things. And one month later, I get the call from the FBI. And they want me to come in. This is three years later from when that all took place. And again, I'm just, uh, you know, I feel like the rug's been yanked out from under me. God, do you enjoy, do you just, do you enjoy watching me fail? Because now I'm an embarrassment. I'm sh full of shame. Talking about a prison sentence. Prison sentence. 
uh, you know, I'm ashamed of the college. I, I, you know, I struggled to, wow, I went to Central Bible College, and here I am going. To, I mean, it was, you know, to my family, to the church. I, I mean, the shame and embarrassment. But yeah. the thing is, the enemy always tries to take our greatest failure and our lowest moments and define us by those. He won me defined as a felon instead of defined by who I am in Christ. And we all can fall into that trap if we're not careful. And this all stemmed from the mortgage collapse Correct. three, four years ago. Well, and, I was, and, and so I was involved in the mortgage investment group. Yeah, and so I, getting into the details of that, obviously it's in the book. But yeah, so that was all from there, which we were told it was legal and all that. But, you know, it was, they said it wasn't. So Yes, uh, you want to have the details on this. This is the book. It's called uh, Self-Surrender, the Key to Dreaming Again. And... Um, Gotta admit, he got two really hard hits, very, very hard, and other other disappointments along the yeah. way. But th those are really major. The information's on the screen, and uh, I think you might want to have him speak in your church. You can get all that kind of information from the website. So why don't you uh, write it down? Now, did this how, did this affect your marriage? I mean, you, you know, you, you the the the. Did she stats. say, are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, she probably did. <laughs> she was nice enough not to say that to me, uh -huh. no. Yeah. Uh, you know, you go through loss of that. the, yeah, <laughs> you go through loss of a child and, and, you know, the amount of divorces on that alone is baffling. Mm -hmm. You go through losing everything and now you feel like you're gaining traction and uh, now this. Another and boy. we're going to be separated for a 15 month sentence. I was there 11 and a half months. I'm missing my son's senior year of high school. Uh, you know, but the separation part was just everything we've been through, God, really. And now, uh, ultimately, it brought us much, much tighter. She's in the studio yeah. today. They're yes. still together. Yes, she <laughs> is. Uh, she rallied uh, beside me. She was so faithful and, uh, and a trooper. Can you describe that year? Uh, yeah, <laughs> there was a, you know, I went in just full of shame, embarrassment, Ministry's over. A minimum security place. Yeah, it was a camp, so that was never. Uh, I was never even handcuffed. I self surrendered, which again, that's that first chapter. That's the name of the book. Yeah, so there was two big tie-ins to you, that. You walked into the was to the FBI and said, "I'm here to self surrender." I walked in Yankton Federal Prison Camp, and that's that's kind of that opening chapter. As you read it, I, uh -huh. I, how did this happen? The loss of my son. All these things that are running through my head as we're driving down there, but as I walk into Yankton Federal Prison Camp, I say those prophetic words. Uh, I'm Rick Unruh, and I'm here to self-surrender. Little did I know that that journey would be about self-surrendering because mm -hmm. everything in prison slows down, all the busyness, all the distractions, uh, you know, and all of a sudden you can hear God, and he's digging deep uh, in a lot of different ways. How, how would you describe mm -hmm. that year? Uh, I mean, just awesome and horrible. I mean, <laughs> God was doing some great things. I tell people, you know what, I... I don't regret going to prison from what, the perspective of what God did for me. Uh -huh. I never, I don't want to sign up for another tour no. of duty. <laughs> but, uh, so that was really cool. But the family part and not being there for your kids and your wife, just, you know, and all this time, you know, the time on your hands you're hearing from God, mm -hmm. but time on your hands when all you can think about are what you're missing at home. So for me, there was these two extreme <laughs> situations, and, which is and, crazy. And what was the adjustment like when you got out? You know, I was blessed with it. I, we'd opened the counseling center. They let me keep running that clear up to when we thought I'd get probation. That didn't happen. Uh, unbelievable. Very blessed to have great people around me in a church. I walk out of Yankton Federal Prison Camp. They plug me right back into the counseling center. Uh, and nine months later, our associate pastor took another, or took one of our campuses. And nine months out of prison, I moved into executive pastor of a pretty good sized church in Wichita, Kansas. So it, it was rather swift. It was amazing. Again, now God has done all this. And I think what I thought was my I'm done moment, God could never use me again. I'm a felon. I'm finished. Really excelled me into areas of ministry. I so often think in terms of songs. It's my <laughs> uh, background. It's music. And Andre Crouch wrote, I thank God for the mountains. And I thank him for the valleys. Yep. And I thank him for the storms he brought me through. For if I never had a problem, I'd never know that he could solve them. And I'd never learn oh, what faith in God So did. good. That's kind of your testimony, yeah. isn't it? 
Yeah. God always has a plan. God will always use you. He'll take those failures <clears throat> and I'll make them a beautiful thing. Because now I'm ministering to people at a different level mm -hmm. than because I've lost a loved one. I've done these things. I can go back. I've, any chance I have to go back into prison and preach, I do. Mm -hmm. I can connect with them at a completely right. different level because I've been in your seat. I've felt that hopelessness. I've had so many through the years guests who <laughs> got saved in prison because Christians were faithful to go in yes. there. And uh, those who got saved always go back. They always go back to minister. Uh, can you actually thank God for the prison time? I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can. I, uh, I mean, it just did a lot of change in me. And I said that was the awesome part uh, of the change taking place. And again, things just slow down. So all this busyness that we have, all of a sudden it gets quiet. So even though you're you don't really have private space. Everybody's always around. You actually can hear from God because you just, all the distractions are gone. It's just, all right, Lord, what and are you trying to say? we have more distractions than ever. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're just about out of time. Let me remind you again, the name of the book, Self-Surrender, the key to dreaming again. And the name of your ministry is? Dream Again dream Ministries. Again. Yep. Dream Again Ministries. And um, I'm sure that there were times you thought you would never, ever, ever dream again uh, prison is I've, I've just spoken to so many I've been in a few of them yeah. I've, I've, I've observed things that were very troubling yeah. in prison I would say that you come out victorious Amen. <laughs> full of joy and <coughs> um, it's God's strange economy isn't it when he takes something like that and he can use it he can make it it is. You make it like pure gold. Yep. Amen. Uh, we have just a few seconds now, and uh, as I said, the website is up. Anybody that wants to know more about maybe short-term short missions or taking your RV and going around and ministering, they can get the information. Oh, yeah. We love, we're desperate for volunteers, so go to rickunder.net, email me, call me, whatever. We, we definitely could use your help. Again, dream again. Don't even as you retire, keep working for the kingdom. Yes, and there are a lot of them doing that. Exactly. They're a lot of fun to be around, I'll tell you. I'm sorry we're out of time, no, but thanks for dropping by. Thank you. And uh, just thank God for the wonderful guests that he brings to us with their testimonies. There's nothing like a good testimony, nothing at all. And it's my joy and privilege to share these kind of stories with you. So be sure and join me next time, friend, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.